Hello, my name is John Blotter. I'm a professor of mechanical engineering at Brigham Young University. This short video presents the fundamentals of Moore Circle using the pole method approach. I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, here's an example of a 2D Moore Circle. We are going to determine the maximum shear stresses the principal stresses, the angles to the principal stresses, and redraw the element oriented to the maximum shear. The first step in doing this is to define our positive coordinate system. In this analysis, I define the positive coordinate system as everything in tension and positive shear as clockwise. This positive coordinate system definition is, is very important as many methods use a different definition for their positive coordinate system. The next step is to identify the vertical and horizontal points that will be drawn or will be used to draw the Moore circle. The vertical point comes from the stresses that act on this vertical face. So my vertical point will be given by sigma x and tau xy. In this case, sigma x is the normal stress. It's a positive 8. The shear stress is a negative 2. And it's negative 2 because I've defined positive as going down. This stress is going up so my shear stress is a negative 2. My horizontal point is given by the stresses that act on this horizontal face or this horizontal line. They're defined as sigma y comma minus tau xy. And In this particular case we have a 6 which is in compression so we have a minus 6 and we have a clockwise two, so we have a plus two. So those are the two points that I'll use to draw my, my Moore circle. Now I'll go ahead and put my coordinate system on, put my axes on, And now I'll plot my points. My vertical point is given by 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And minus 2. 1, 2. And I make a little point there. And since that's my vertical point, I'm going to draw a vertical line through that point. And I draw this kind of light. My horizontal point is given by minus 6 and 2, so I'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, minus 6 and positive 2, and I make a point there. And I draw a horizontal line. Now, in this pole method, the, whole, the intersection of my horizontal line and my vertical line is called the origin of planes. And this origin of planes represents this element in this exact stress state. And that will make more sense to you here in a few moments. I'll cut these lines down a little bit and save a little bit of room on my drawing. Now I can go ahead and draw my, my circle. Uh, I can draw a unique circle through three points. Or I can realize that these two points represent the diameter of the circle and I can simply sketch them sketch a line through those two points and they should cross at one. Now I can come and draw a circle that will go between those two points and you'll note that your origin of planes should also connect to that circle and be part of it. 
So there is my morph circle. Now the first thing I was to determine was the maximum shear. We know that the maximum shear is occurs right there and the maximum shear is given by the radius of the Morse circle. So I need to find the radius of this circle. To do that, I typically find the center first. And the center of the circle is given by sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2. In this case, that would be 8 plus a minus 6 is 8 minus 6 divided by 2 is 1. And you can see that we cross pretty close to the 1. It should be exactly there, but my drawing is slightly off. Now the radius can be determined by going to our origin of planes. And so what I'll do is I'll draw a line from the center of my circle to my origin of planes and I'll use the Pythagorean theorem. So I know this distance and I know this distance. So taking the square root of the sum of the squares of those two lines I can determine the radius of this circle. So in this particular case I'll make this line a little bit shorter to give me some room. The radius is going to be given by sigma x minus the center stress. Sigma center squared plus this line which is simply tau xy squared and all of that raised to the one half. Plugging in numbers here, my sigma x was 8 my sigma center was 1, my tau xy is 2, and I'll raise all of that to the 1 half. This will give me 8 minus 1 is 7, squared is 49, plus 2 squared 4 will be 53 raised to the 1 half power, and that's equal to 7.28. So I now know the maximum shear stress is equal to 7.28. My principal shear stress, my first principal shear, or my first principal normal stress can be given by the center of the circle plus the radius. And so I'll have sigma center plus the radius, and this will be 1 plus 7.28 which gives me 8.28 for my first principal stress. My other principal stress will be given by sigma equals sigma center minus the radius. So here's my center, I'll subtract the radius and this will be my other principal stress. So sigma center minus radius would be 1 minus 7.28 which gives me a negative 6.28. Now just to kind of double check and make sure those numbers make sense and that I didn't make an error, my circle here does cross at about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and a little bit. So about 8.28 makes sense. And minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and a little bit makes sense with a minus 6.28. The next goal is to determine the angles to the principal stresses. And this will be done by going to the OP or the origin of planes and drawing a line from the origin of planes through the principal stresses. And this will help identify which angle I'm actually trying to compute. The two principal stresses, or the, the angles to the two principal stresses, will always be off by 90 degrees. So that will be 90 degrees. The angle that I'm looking for, or that I can find and then determine the other angles, I'll label here as alpha. Alpha is equal to the inverse tangent 
of the opposite over the adjacent. In this case, the opposite would be this distance, which is my sigma 1, my first principal stress, minus my normal stress, 8. So I would have 8.28 minus 8. And my adjacent is simply equal to the magnitude of the shear stress, which is 2. So my angle will be equal to the inverse tangent of 0.28 all over 2, which is equal to approximately 8 degrees. And so my alpha here is 8 degrees. The angle from the horizontal axis to my stresses would be that same angle in that this stress here to my other principal stress would be also rotated at an angle of 8 degrees. The final step is to determine or show the element reoriented as pointing towards the maximum shear stresses. So doing that, I will be looking at these angles. Here's my origin of planes. My maximum shear stress occurs up at this point. My other shear stress will act at 90 degrees and will occur down here. So my new element oriented to this position would look very much like this, where these, my new element would be oriented in this position. <laughs> and so essentially all I need to do is find another angle. And in this case I can find an angle beta using the same inverse tangent approach. So beta would be equal to the a tan of my opposite, in this case my maximum or my, my line here, my opposite, would be my maximum shear stress, which is goes from the center of my circle out to here, minus my tau xy. So this distance right here is my tau xy. This distance right here would be my radius minus tau xy, and my adjacent is simply my normal stress here at 8 minus my center value again. So I'd have my sigma x minus my sigma center, and this would be equal to the a tan of, my radius is 7.28, minus my tau xy, which is 2, all divided by my 8, minus my center, which is 1, and that will give me 5.28 all over 7. And let me take the arc tan of that. So the a tan of 5.28 all over 7. And computing that number, I can determine my angle beta. I'll simply show it as the arc tan of that angle for now. So redrawing that element, I would have an element that is on this orientation about like this. The angle from the x-axis would appear something like this. And this would be 
my angle beta. Now, the normal stresses that and shear stresses that act on these planes can be determined by drawing the arrows where the lines intersect the circle. So for example, in this case, this value right here has a normal stress of a 1 and a shear stress of the radius, which is 7.28, and it's a positive shear stress. So drawing these lines, I can draw my normal stress here as with a magnitude of 1, and I can draw my positive 7.28 shear stress as clockwise, and my arrows would go like that. Now all I do is simply slide these arrows down to my element. And sliding these down, I would get a normal stress in this direction with a magnitude of 1, and I'd have shear stresses clockwise on these faces with a magnitude of 7.28. Redrawing those same lines on this figure, I would have normal stresses of 1 and a shear stress clockwise of 7.28. Now I apply the same idea down here. Again, my normal stress is a positive 1 because I intersect at a positive 1 my shear stress now is a negative value, so it will go counterclockwise. And counterclockwise, it'll look like that. Sliding these arrows up to these faces, I am going to have a normal stress of 1, and I'm going to have a counterclockwise shear stress of 7.28. And that makes sense in that my element is shown to be in equilibrium and the arrows are head to head or tail to tail. Redrawing these arrows here on this element I will have my normal stress of 1 and my shear stress counterclockwise of 7.28 and again my angle beta would come from this definition. That concludes this video and it has shown you how to determine the maximum shear, the principal stresses, the angles to the principal stresses, and we have redrawn the element oriented to the maximum shear. I hope this has been helpful.